Great, thank you. Okay, anyone tell me coronal, sagittal or axial? Coronal. Great, well done. And what about uh, T1 or T2? Not so easy. Anyone want to have a guess? Oh, this is going to be a long lecture. Okay, so it's, we're going to, when we decide whether it's T1 or T2, we're going to look for CSF structures, okay, or water structures, in which case we've got the spinal cord there, and that should be surrounded by CSF. Okay, and now we see that that is surrounded by CSF and that CSF is dark, it's hypo intense. Okay, so can that, t so, the, so the fluid is dark on this image. Now, can someone tell me whether it's T1 or T2? Is it T1? Yes, it is T1. Well done, excellent, excellent. Okay, so it's a coronal and it's T1. Okay, and we know that because the fluid's dark. All right. Okay, so what about this one? It's sagittal. I'm going to give you the easy option. Can, can someone tell me whether it's T1 or T2? Is it T2? It's T2. Yep, perfect. Um, and it's T2 because the CSF around this cord is bright, okay? And of course the cord is dark, but the CSF is bright, which means fluid's bright, which means it's most likely to be a T2, okay? Axial, T1 or T2? Anyone? Where's the fluid in the CSF? Is it bright or where's the CSF, which is the fluid? Is it bright or is it dark? Um, is it T2 because the CSF is dark? I mean bright? Perfect, perfect, well done. Okay, does everyone get that? Is anyone not, not um, sure of that? So it's T2 because the CSF is bright. Okay, so more likely to be a T2, okay? Okay, um, I'm getting bored with these games. So this is a T, um, more likely to be a T1. Okay. And this is uh, T1 or T2, or could it be a CT? Yes, it could be a CT. How do we know that's a CT? First of all, the bones. There's bright signal in this cortex of the bone, okay? And that means we, we normally get a dark signal in MRI because the cortex um, doesn't have many hydrogen atoms, okay? We know in MRI we image hydrogen. We know that the cortex is, doesn't have many hydrogen atoms. So this cortex of the bone is usually hypo-intense, okay? The... Um, the uh, Marrow in the bone is usually fat, so that's hyper-intense, okay, relative to the cortex. We know this is CT because this cortex is hard, densely packed bone, and it's absorbing the x-rays, the radiation, okay, or attenuating the radiation, which means that it's, um, it's creating a shadow, it's hyper-intense on CT. Okay, and we can see all the bones are hyper intense. We can also see that we get lung nodules and things like that, um, and soft tissue structures in here that, that just doesn't look like an MRI scan. All right. So that's just more, the more images you look at, the more MR images you look at, and maybe CT, the more you can identify what they are. Okay, and the, and the more you'll get to understand T1 from T2. There's also another weighting, and, and you might have noticed when I was asking this, I was asking what um, weighting is it more likely to be. There's also another weighting 
that's actually T2 over T1. It's a, it's a ratio of T2 to T1, okay? Um, and that's, that's in a gradient scan. So we're not gonna cover that. Fortunately, I don't even think we cover that much next year. Um, that's mainly in postgraduate studies. But because it's a gradient scan, we do it a lot through the chest because it's very fast, okay? And it gives good images of the chest structures, the abdominal structures. So just to be aware that there is T2 weighting, there is T1 weighting, and there's also what's called T2 over T1 weighting in, in gradient imaging. Okay, I'm sure you're also aware of the anatomy and the, and the physiology of the cardiovascular system. So just to refresh, we're gonna start with oxygenated blood in the left ventricle. And we know that that oxygenated blood gets pumped through the ascending aorta, okay, through the aortic knuckle or the arch of the aorta. And we know that that blood comes out from brachiocephalic or inominate artery, the left common carotid artery, okay, and I believe Peter's given you head and neck, so we know where that are, those blood vessels go above this line, and the left, sub, the left subcladian artery, okay. So the blood goes the brachiocephalic or the left common carotid and or the left subcladian or it goes down and turns into the, dis, the descending aorta, okay? The other vessel that we've missed here is the coronary arteries that have come off the cusp or just distal to the cusp of the aortic root, okay? And we know the coronary arteries deliver oxygenated blood to the heart muscle or the myocardium, okay? Um, okay, so the blood's gone down, it's gone to the body, Okay, the legs, the brain, the arms, and of course, the organs inside the abdomen, not to scale. Our abdomen isn't just one big cardio system. Um, okay, so all oh, trunks and legs, there we are, down here. So then the blood comes back, and the blood comes back from the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava to the right atrium. Okay, we're also going to talk about the, the um, subclavian vein and the brachiocephalic vein. Okay, the left comes over the front, the right comes down and um, brachiocephalic vein, and then they join to form the superior vena cava. Okay, and both these vessels deliver blood to the right atrium. Okay, so this blood we know has, is deoxygenated because it's blue and it's come from the body. Okay, into the right atrium, through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle. And of course, we know that that ventricle pumps blood to the, pumps deoxygenated blood. Um, the only vessel that pumps deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary trunk left and the right pulmonary artery to the to the lungs and then of course that deoxygenated blood gets reoxygenated and comes back through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium okay left atrium mitral valve left ventricle and then to the rest of the body okay so that should be a revision for everyone let's see what that looks like on mri images and these images are going to start from the diaphragm and we're going to move up towards the top of the head. Okay, so these ones you can see that I've labeled the structures for you. If you play this, when you're revising and you play this in your uh, viewer down here, then don't forget that you can follow structures. Okay, and these structures can help you learn where you are in the heart where you are in the chest, and you can follow these structures up, okay? So if you go in, in clinic, this is very helpful because you can always, if you get to halfway through the chest and in clinic, you don't know what that vessel is there, 
you don't have this sign on a on a image that says, oh, this is the main pulmonary artery. So you can um, simply chase it down, chase it down, and you see that it goes into the right um, ventricle that you do recognise, or you certainly will recognise after this lecture. Okay, and same thing. So you go up there, and then you can you can chase it, you can follow it through. And then you can see, okay, well, that must be the main pulmonary artery. And that must be the left pulmonary artery. And of course, we, we know that's the right ventricle, the main pulmonary artery. And now we know that's the right pulmonary artery. Okay. Unfortunately, you've got to learn those structures first. Okay. So the, the best thing to do is to learn those structures by going from slide to slide and following the structures up and then you'll be able to get to a point where you identify things so when you when you do look at an image in clinic like that then you're 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 able to say okay that's the right pulmonary artery i i identify that structure i don't necessarily need to travel be from slide to slide okay that's what you're aiming to get okay so we go down to the diaphragm Okay, and from the bottom of the do or from the bottom of the heart, we can see that we've got the inferior vena cava. So we've said that delivers blood from the abdomen and from the, the legs. Okay, all structures inferior to the heart. Okay, um, we've got the right ventricle. So we've got the right atrium here, just the probably the superior portion of the right atrium. Okay. The, so the right ventricle, so the right ventricle is on the right and it's anterior, okay? You can see the septum and you can see the left ventricle, okay? And of course, we've got the apex of the heart, the pointy end of the heart. The opposite to the apex is the base, okay? So the base of the heart is back here and the apex of the heart is the pointy end at the, at the um, bottom left of the heart. We come up a little bit higher. We've still got the inferior vena cava. We come towards the right atrium. Okay, we're still in the right ventricle. We've got the septum fairly well. If we go up a, a little bit more, we can see, if you're not sure with unlabeled images, you can see that this is the right ventricle. Okay, which means this is the right atrium. How do we know? How can we separate the right ventricle from the left ventricle? We know the left ventricle delivers blood to the um, uh, delivers blood to the rest of the body. Okay, so it's going to have to have a nice thick myocardium to deliver blood to the rest of the body, whereas the right ventricle just has a thin myocardium because it only has to deliver blood to the lungs. Okay, so thick myocardium to the rest of the body, thin myocardium to the lungs. And that's how not only you can say, well, that's the left ventricle because it's mainly on the left side, but also because it's got its nice thick myocardium. Okay, and if we go through it, we can see maybe that slice is better. We can see the thick myocardium as opposed to the thin right ventricle. Okay. Um, so we go up, we've got the left ventricle, we've got the right ventricle. Of course, we've got the descending aorta, okay, more posterior, we know it comes up and then goes down at the posterior aspect of the heart. Okay. We're coming up, we're getting to the right atrium, the right ventricle. We've done all this stuff. Of course, we've got the lungs because the lungs are dark, because air is dark. Okay, and we've got the lung markings. We don't have, of course, MRI don't have the, the ability to window um, and um, to window and we can, although we can do um, kernels and, and soft tissue things, we can't and um, uh, what's it called? Soft tissue windowing um, and matrix edge enhancement. Um, we, we don't, 
we don't get the detail in the lungs as well as CT do, okay? So if there is a nodule detected in a lung CT scan, a lung MRI scan, the patient's always going to re get referred to MRI, to CT, okay, where they get proper lung windows, um, proper edge enhancement to see, get a better definition of those lung nodules, okay? When we're doing imaging of the chest, we really, our main focus is the heart, okay, and the blood vessels coming off the heart, okay? We very rarely get clinical indications of an MRI scan required for the chest. Um, okay, so we've got all those structures there. We're going to go up um, another image. Okay. Um, those image. Okay, so now we've seen that um, we have what's called the left ventricular outflow tract. Okay, and that's the passage between the left ventricle that we saw on the previous slide and the proximal aorta, okay, or the aortic root, okay? So if you keep coming up the slices, which I'm having trouble doing, okay? So there's the ascending aorta, all right? And we know that the ascending aorta connects to the left ventricle, all right, so unfortunately we've missed a slice between because otherwise we have too many slices. But this is the this is the outflow tract from the left ventricle to the aorta, and the left ventricle, the outflow tract, and then the next going up one more, we get the ascending aorta. Okay. Like we have the right ventricle. We have the right outflow tract, okay? And then that turns into the pulmonary artery, okay? Which we've discovered, we've already talked about and that bifurcates into the left and the right main pulmonary artery, okay? Okay, so we keep going up. Um, and then of course we're at the top, we've got the, we've got the outflow tract or we've got the, the great vessels coming off the heart, the main pulmonary artery, the ascending aorta, and we've got the superior vena cava, okay? So obviously we're at the top of the heart, we're getting blood from the, um, the subclavian, um, the brachiocephalic veins going into the superior vena cava. Okay, we're also getting the, the pulmonary vein at the back that's delivering blood. The pulmonary vein accepts blood from the heart, from the lungs. So it's oxygenated blood from the lungs going to the pulmonary vein. And of course, we're a little bit higher. So we, if we go down a slice, we can see that pulmonary vein delivers blood into the left atrium. Okay left pulmonary vessels, so we can see this vasculature in the, um, in the lungs. Obviously, we can see that vasculature as opposed to the, the air in the lungs. Okay. We keep going up. We have, if we look at the... Um, that is not the descending aorta, that's the ascending aorta. So if we keep going up, okay, we see the ascending aorta meeting the descending aorta, and there's the arch, okay? So again, we've missed a slice there because um, of too many slices, but we can see, we see the arch there, okay? And then of course, we've gone up above the arch, and then we have the right brachiocephalic artery, which is the first vessel coming off. We have, if we go up one slice more, we have, so there's the arch, we've lost the, the this ascending aorta, I'm sorry, the ascending aorta, okay? And then we go up, we still have the ascending aorta, okay? And we have the brachiocephalic artery that's already came up, come off the ascending aorta, okay? 
We go up further, there's our arch. So we've got the brachiocephalic artery, the arch, and we've got this left subclavian artery. So as we keep going up, then we have the three vessels, okay? And we've cleared the arch, okay? So we've got the right brachiocephalic artery is the first vessel to come off the arch. We've got the left common carotid artery, okay? I think it's best to put that as common carotid artery, okay? And then we've got the left subclavian artery, okay? And then, of course, as we keep going up, these we get um, we get these vessels higher up into the neck, okay. And then, of course, we start to get the right vertebral arteries, the left vertebral arteries, and so on, the subclavian arteries, as we go up at the top of the chest, okay. And then that's where my talk morphs into Peter's talk on the head and neck vessels. Okay, so if we start at the top now, we get the left jugular vein. So the left, we know the jugular vein delivers deoxygenated blood from the brain. Okay, and the right jugular vein delivers deoxygenated blood on the right side from the brain. Okay, and we remember from the transverse sinus to the sigmoid sinus to the internal jugular vein. Okay, and then if we go down inferior, we've still got the jugular vein, the left and the right, inferior again. That left starts to come across the anterior aspect of the heart, of the mediastinum. Okay, so we've still got the right jugular vein. Okay, but again, like the, like the arteries, the veins are not symmetrical at this point. They start to the left, starts to cross over to the right. Okay, so if we come over here, we've got the, the jugular, internal jugular veins turns into the brachiocephalic vein, okay, and the right brachiocephalic vein, the left and the right brachiocephalic vein. Okay, so come further, we know that they meet at the superior vena cava. Okay, so if we're doing, and then of course that comes in, and we know that travels down uh, inferiorly, so the superior vena cava travels inferiorly to the right atrium. Okay. Okay, so we go up again. We know also, and Peter will probably show you on the CT images of the chest, that when we do dynamic scans, particularly C2, we can also do them with dy dynamic scans in MRI, but we'll see these vessels as being hyper enhanced. Okay, they will have a lot of contrast in them because, of course, we're injecting the vessels in the arm, and those the veins will come. The contrast in the veins will end up in the left brachiocephalic vein, that will end up in the superior vena cava. Okay, so they will be hyper enhanced when we're doing um, when we're doing um, MRAs and and IV contrast dynamic studies, okay? Of course, you've also got other structures in the chest. So you've got the trachea, you've got the esophagus um, behind the trachea. You've also got little nodes, okay? So we don't go into nodes much in this lecture, but you've got juxtaesophageal nodes, um, juxtatracheal nodes. The nodes are very slight. You can just see them there behind the aorta, the descending aorta. Okay, we really only see those nodes when they're pathological. Okay, so they will stand out much more when they're pathological. Because these nodes are normal caliber, um, we don't see them any more than little white dots. Okay, so of course we know that's lymph tissue and we, we know um, we will see those nodes in a, a tumor patient or someone who's got a, an infection, for example they'll be quite large, okay? Um, the axial images are most important for chest imaging, both, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing both CT and MRI. So um, hopefully I've given you a start, but you will need to look at these images and go through them 
um, and the structures that you see here. Please, as I say, please feel free to go through them in um, slice order. So as you can go down and you can see, um, you can follow the structures. Okay. And you get an idea. Also remember as well that it's very hard to pick anatomy on these images if you don't know your anatomy. Okay, so make sure you go back and you do know your passage of blood through the circuitry system um, in these vessels. All right. The abdomen's a little bit different in that we do other images um, in the abdomen. We can do images for specifically looking at the liver, specifically looking at the spleen or the kidneys, whereas the heart, um, we generally just do um, images of the heart. And chest images, very rarely chest or um, other images. So, if we have a look at these images here, we know that um, the other way, the other way as well, is to define these weightings. Um, we have T1 and we have T2. Um, another another class of imaging that we have is bright blood. Okay, which we've gone through so far. We've used bright blood. We've also got dark blood or black blood. Okay, so black blood is images that are more um, that are more focused at morphology or actually having a look at the anatomy. In other words, having a look at the anatomy inside the vessels and inside the structures that are defined by the black blood. So if we have a look at this um, using black blood and we can follow where those structures go. So we know that's the IVC. Okay, we, we know it's just just proc just distal to the chordate lobe or just behind i should say posterior to the chordate lobe okay so if we go through that through these images we can see that 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 structure meets up with the left atrium with the right atrium okay so we'll go back there's the ivc and we're going to go up towards the heart and we can see that that's, that IVC meets up with the right atrium. Okay. Of course, we know that the right atrium delivers blood to the or, or is is immediately before the right ventricle. Okay. We've got the right ventricle. We know what happens comes out of the right ventricle, the pulmonary trunk or the main pulmonary artery. So if we keep going, we can see there's the main pulmonary artery, there's the right pulmonary artery, and if we go up a little bit higher, we can see there's the left pulmonary artery. Okay, so we've just shown the passage of blood on these dark blood images. Okay, again, IVC going up to the right atrium, going to the right ventricle, and then a pulmonary trunk, left, a right and left pulmonary, um, main pulmonary arteries. Okay. Okay, so now we know the right and the left. Did we get that? So the right and the left pulmonary vein. Okay, the main pulmonary vein to the, to the left atrium, the left ventricle, and then we know we've got the left main, left um, ventricular outflow tract goes to the aorta. Okay. So we can see the passage of blood through the circuitry system. And then we've got the ascending and then the descending aorta. Okay, so we'll go through that again. Just bear with me. Why is the same slide? Oh, no. Sorry, I'm losing my space in this. There we are, that's what I want. Okay, so the left 
and the right pulmonary veins, okay, so with oxygenated blood back to the heart. We follow those up, they join to the main pulmonary artery, the main pulmonary vein. X delivers blood to the left atrium, to the left ventricle with that nice thick myocardium. And of course, once that pumps blood up into the left ventricular outflow tract, which eventually um, makes it to or is part of the aorta. Okay, and then of course we follow the aorta. We have the descending aorta and the arch. Okay, and we've learned that if we come higher than the arch, we have the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. Okay. And then we know that that delivers blood up to the brain. All right. And just as a by, and you learn this next year, but you can see these vessels here. You could imagine the black blood, you can see if there's plaque inside these vessels, that black blood shows that plaque particularly well. Okay. Whereas if it's bright blood, we don't really see inside those vessels. Okay. Because it's all bright. Okay. But that's by the way. Okay. So now we're going the, the right and the left brachiocephalic veins. Okay. So we know that they're going to come down. The left is going to come over the right. And then it's going to join in the superior vena cava. Okay. And of course, we know that that turns into, travels inferior and goes down to the right atrium. Delivers blood to the right ventricle. Okay. And then of course, we do it all again. We started with the inferior vena cava. We've finished with the superior vena cava. Okay. But of course, we've, we've started and finished in the right atrium. Okay, so um, the main thing with, the, with, with imaging chest is that um, you have a look and you identify the structures on the axial images in clinic, okay, because that is the most important. Axial images through the chest is the real, um, is the real workhorse. Well, that's, that's the imaging. They're, they're the type of imaging that are most informative. Of course, we need to know, excuse me, we do need to know other planes. Um, and you can see here, I'm not going to go through it in too much detail. Suffice to say, um, we'll go through and pick, pick some structures out of these slides. But um, from my point of view, certainly when you get into clinic, the better you know coronal imaging and sagittal imaging, the better you're going to be able to identify the, the structures or the easier you identify the structures on the axial images. Okay, so again, if we look through a coronal heart, we can see that's the right, that's the um, left ventricle again by that myocardium. Okay, nice thick myocardium. We've got an aortic valve here. So we've talked about the, the left ventricle, the outflow tract into the ascending aorta. Okay, and then of course, we're looking at the plane as the coronal image, so we followed that ascending aorta up to the arch at the level of the brachiocephalic artery. Okay. Um, coming further still, we have, we've got the cavity of the left ventricle. Okay. We've got the coronary artery, left main coronary artery is a tiny little artery. We know originates from the ascending aorta. Okay. Um, and of course, we, we remember that this, this left ventricle was at the front, it was anterior to the chest. Okay, so if we go more posterior, we're going to come into the right ventricle. Okay. I, I'm sorry, no, the right ventricle was at the end. Oh boy, I'm tired now. 
the right ventricle. From when we had a look at the, um, when we had a look at the, I'll re-upload these slides. When we had a look at the axial scans, we remember that the right ventricle was anterior of the chest. Okay, so of course, when we do coronal slides through the chest, we can see that the right ventricle is anterior in the, in the earlier slides. Okay. And then we pass into the left ventricle. Okay. And then, of course, we've got the main pulmonary artery. Okay, so we've got, in that case, we've got the right ventricular outflow tract. Okay, of course, we have the left going to the left atrium. This right is to the right ventricular outflow tract. Okay, so if we come up here, the right um, ventricular outflow tract is from the right ventricle, and then we have the right main pulmonary artery. And of course, we can follow that up and we know that that bifurcates into the right pulmonary artery, okay, and the left main pulmonary artery as we travel um, posteriorly, okay. So again, if we have a look at those axial slides, I'm gonna have to revise these slides we we just saw on the coronal slides that we've done a we've done a we got a slice that was anterior to the heart okay so if we're going from anterior to posterior of course we go through the right ventricle first and then we move into the left ventricle okay so when we have a look at these coronal slides, we can see that we start in the right ventricle, and as we move through, we move through to the um, to the left ventricle first. Okay, from the right ventricle as we progress posteriorly, and then again we can follow those structures back as we did the aorta and the uh, main pulmonary arteries. And sagittal, same again from side to side. Okay, so we've got the right ventricle there. So, and then we have the right, again, we can say, we, we remind ourselves that the right ventricle is at the front and the, and the left ventricle is at the back. Again, we can identify these very easily. We just see the myocardium. Okay, of course here we've got a profile of the right ventricle, the main pulmonary artery, okay, as it passes blood into the outflow tract. So from the ventricle to the main pulmonary artery and then to the um, left and right pulmonary veins. Okay, and we can, of course we can see those here. So we keep going to the right, we can see the right pulmonary artery there. Okay. So the main pulmonary artery, the, the right ventricle, the main pulmonary artery, and the left and right main pulmonary arteries. Okay. Of course, we also see the, the, um, the lungs. Okay, so if I get a, there's a trachea. Okay, so we've got, a, obviously, we've got a midline of the trachea. We've got the carina where it bifurcates. So if we keep going along that, that slice, of course, we're gonna have the left main bronchus, okay? Or we're gonna have the right main bronchus tucked in there, okay? So again, you can follow the structures through, okay? And then of course you get, the further you get into the lung, you've still got that right main pulmonary artery in the right lung. Okay, and all the vessels there that we've discussed. Okay. So again, we, we mainly look at 
there's the little coronary arteries. We mainly look at the axials, but it definitely helps to familiarize yourselves with the sagittals and the coronals, and that will help you with the axials and will help you when you get through clinic. Okay. So this is the um, this is what's called a four chamber view. Okay, for obvious reasons. We'll talk a little bit more about this next year, but we, when we image, specifically image the heart, we have certain views of the heart that we need to um, become familiar with. And we need to get standard projections. So this is a standard projection of a, of a four chamber view of the heart. Okay, we've got the left ventricle. All right, we've got the right ventricle and we've got the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve and the um, right and the left atrium, okay? And again, this, these views can be changed. So it depends on the, the slice and the orientation of this four chamber. If the patient's had an operation, quite often they, those images flip, okay? So it's, it is important that you understand the orientation and the anatomy relative to surrounding structures and within the heart itself, okay? So I was saying before the apex and the base of the heart, okay? Okay, so there's the structures. Now that's a four chamber view of the heart. This is a two chamber view of the heart, okay? So it's a left two chamber view and it's as if we took a slice straight through there. Okay, so I'll, I'll um, I think you can see that sufficiently, but we take a slice straight through that left ventricle and left atrium. Okay, so if we took that slice out and looked at it, we would get a left ventricle, the mitral valve, and then we get the left atrium, okay? And of course, we've got nice myocardium there that we can interrogate or view, okay? Now, we also get a view um, we'll discuss next year, um, and this is, you might have heard me say, the left ventricular outflow tract, or LVOT view. So you can see here, we've got a left atrium, a left ventricle filled with contrast. We've got the, mitre, the aortic valve, it's a tricuspid valve, it's got three leaflets and it's going, the, so the blood's coming in the atrium to the ventricle and then being ejected through the aorta, the ascending aorta. Okay, and we, of course, we know where that's going from, from now. Short axis view. So if we took an image, let's say we took an image, we positioned it, oh, um, no. that way. Okay, so we're gonna go bright red, that'll be for now, because we've pushed for time. So we're gonna do a slice that cuts the heart in half there, okay? So that's called a short axis view, and we can do multiple views. We can do one there, one there, one there, one there, and we keep going until we're out of the heart. Okay, so if we took that slice, and we brought that out and had a look at it, what we'd see is we'd see the left ventricle and we'd see the right ventricle, okay? And of course, we get a great look at that myocardium of the heart. So the left ventricle and the right ventricle, okay? And that's called a short axis view. Okay, so that's the short axis. So four chamber view, long axis of the left, long axis view, 
and then the short axis view showing the myocardium and axial images of the heart. Okay, so, so far that's the chest, okay, and that's the anatomy within the chest. Now we're going to look at the brachial plexus. So the brachial plexus is from C5 to T1, okay, and that, these are, those are the nerves that are coming out of those vertebral um, neuro exit foramina at those levels, okay, and then they travel down and they actually join at the brachial plexus and travel down the axilla to the arm. Okay, so we see those nerves and we see those blood vessels, um, oxygenated and deoxygenated blood vessels. Okay, how do they, we see them on the MR or the cross-sectional images? There's our nerves coming between C5 and C7. And we've travelled, we've got a plane that's, that's parallel with the passage of those nerves as they travel out of the spine. Okay. And we can see there there's pathology involving the seventh nerve. Okay. But they don't always maintain the same course out of that spine. So we do have to do different slices along the neck. Okay, and then we follow the, the passage of those um, vessels. Of course, if we were to do a slice parallel with those vessels, okay, then of course we would see those vessels as they came out and travelled along the length of, their, of the brachial plexus. And there they are there on a T1 weighted image as the nerves travel out and along the, the passage of those brachial plexus with the muscles. Okay. So can I, hopefully everyone can appreciate the different planes and the different, um, well, the different weighting. Certainly we can see that that's T2 weighting and pathology or, or fluid in that area is very bright. Okay. But also, you can hopefully um, value that the, the passage of the nerves changes. So we have to do the best plane we can to get those nerves in profile and um, interrogate them in sagittal and axial. So we view, the, we view them, we can get most information out of them as possible. Okay, so we've got 10 minutes to go. We're gonna end up with the neck. There's the structures that we need to identify. Hopefully you're familiar with these structures. Main ones being the parotid gland. Okay, so just, um, we could say just medial to the ear, medially and inferior to the ear. Okay, we've got the mastoid muscle there, we know. So we've got, and we know that those parotid glands make saliva. Okay, and they pass the saliva down into the mouth through the parotid duct. Um, we've got the sublingual glands. Okay, so we know sub meaning under and lingual meaning the tongue. So sublingual glands, okay, that do the same thing. And we've got the submandibular glands. Okay under the mandible with the um, submandibular or Wharton's duct, submandibular duct going again into the mouth, into the roof, of the, into the, um, underneath the tongue. Okay, so we've got the three glands there that we have to, we have to recognise. Um, we'll also have to recognise um, the, the muscles that we're going to probably best to show on the actual images. The areas of the mouth, okay, which is most important. So we've got the nasopharynx, so the nasal cavity. Oropharynx, oral cavity. The laryngopharynx, okay. Also known as the hypopharynx. So 
if you hit, and then as, of course we have the esophagus underneath, but if you, you'll see some, um, some literature describe the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx or the hypopharynx. They're the same things, okay? They start um, from the top of the epiglottis, okay? So the larynx, the epiglottis are all in the hypopharynx. And then, of course, we've got the other structures, the cricoid. Um, tongue is obviously in the, in the oropharynx, as is the nose in the nasal, nasopharynx, okay? From sagittal, we go to coronal and we can see the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the hypopharynx. We've got their hypo or laryngopharynx. Okay, and we can see the we can see the different structures in that view of the um, uh, cross section. Okay, and we'll see that in these images. So we've got a midline sagittal. How do that does those sections look on the midline sagittal? Nasopharynx, oropharynx, laryngo or hypopharynx, okay? We've got the soft palate there. We know the soft palate is made up of soft tissue, okay? And we've got the hard palate at the roof of the mouth that's made up of bone, maxilla, okay? We cross section, so we've got the body of the mandible and of course the teeth. To orientate ourselves. The uvula, so you open your mouth and there's that punching bag at the back of your throat. Okay, so that's the uvula or vula, um, inferior aspect of the soft palate. Of course, we've got the oropharynx, we've got the epiglottis, epiglottis. Okay, so this is the hypopharynx area and we've got the lingual tonsil. So we know we've got the tongue and we've got the lingual tonsil right at the back of the tongue. Okay, or just the tonsils. Um, we mentioned before, we've got the esophagus immediately behind the trachea, which is immediately we can see behind the cricoid cartilage um, and the hyoid bone and the different structures in the larynx. Okay. We move sagittal, okay, and we've got the same structures. We have the sublingual glands, so we can see the glands are a little bit brighter than the muscles in T1 weighting, okay? So we've got the sublingual glands. We know they're glands because they're brighter, and we know they're sublingual lingual because they're under the tongue, they're not, under the mandible. We can see that mandible comes down, obviously, just above the chin, okay? So they're sublingual, not submandible. Come lateral, we start to see, of course, the tonsils, we get the sublingual glands. We get the submandibular glands now. Of course, we see the mandible coming up, so we have the submandibular glands the body of the mandible, and of course we have the tongue, the lateral aspect of the tongue, and of course the teeth. Okay, we're coming lateral. So we've got the body, the submandibular gland, and now we get to the parotid gland. Okay, immediately inferior, immediately anterior, small portion anterior, to the um, middle ear. And of course, we mentioned the masseter muscle that helps you masticate, to, um, chew. Sternocleidomastoid muscle, where does that attach? Okay, we know it's lateral. We can see it's lateral. It's coming down the neck, inferior to the parotid gland. It attaches at the sternum, it attaches at the clido, which is the clavicle, and it attaches at the mastoid. Okay, sterno, clido, mastoid muscle. Axial. Okay, so a busy slide. We've got the um, 
Alveolar process of the mandible. So of course we can see the mandible here. Okay, and the alveolar process. So we've got the, the teeth. The lingual septum. Okay, so lingual tongue septum separating left to right. The tongue, the masseter muscle, we like our masseter muscle. Parotid gland is at the back. Okay, posterior to the oropharynx. We know we're in the oropharynx because there are the teeth. The arteries you would recognize from Peter's talk. Oropharynx, so we know that's the airway. Coming down, medial pterygoid muscle and the uvula. We've, we've seen on the sagittal scan. So again, compare the axial, compare the sagittal. Okay, if you know it on one, you can work it out on the other. Submandibular duct. Okay, so of course we're above the mandible. So the gland, the body of the gland is submandibular, but we still get the duct. Okay, because the duct obviously has to make it into the oral cavity. Symphysis of the mandible. So symphysis is really just joining, usually in the midline. Genioglossus, okay, so again, we break it down. Genio meaning the chin, okay, and glossus meaning the tongue. So genioglossus muscle, um, the muscle connecting the chin with the tongue, okay. Submandibular gland, parotid gland, so we just seen that parotid gland there. Okay, in the arteries, median glosso epiglottal fold, epiglottic fold. Okay, I think we can work that out. Geniohyoid muscle, we've talked about. Okay, actually, no, we talked about the genioglossal muscle. So the geniohyoid muscle goes from the chin to the hyoid bone. Okay, which is here. Okay, submandibular gland, vessels, arteries, hypopharynx. So we're down at the bottom of the, the oropharynx. Structures there. Similar to the um, to the slides that we saw, we've got the different nasopharynx, oropharynx, hypopharynx. We can see the epiglottis, okay, from a coronal, and of course we see the uvula and the trachea. Okay, parotid. We can work out the parotid and the muscles. The um, sternocleidomastoid muscles. We can imagine them on the other planes, okay? So again, as, I, as I've said, we can see the take home message. Learning the circulation pathways will um, help identifying the structures within the chest, okay? And you have to always go back and revise and revise. Look at st um, structures above and below the structures to determine their pathway. Okay, so especially when you're learning the structures, always follow those structures through and always learn the meanings of structures that will help you. Um, uh, I'll get to that chat. So the meaning of structures will help you identify them. Okay. Um, and learning their meaning. Chin uh, the um, geniohyoid bones, the sternocleidomastoid muscle, you know where they are, you know, because they're, they're, the answer is in their name. Okay. Um, yeah, so Caitlin's written a good, um, a good uh, um, question. So the usual, this, the images are still images, absolutely. So we can't, during the test, you can't scroll up or scroll down, okay? So 
Absolutely, Caitlin. Um, so what I, what I recommend to students is when you're learning these images to scroll up and scroll down, okay? So what I mean by that is you're learning the chest images. I've got um, these black blood images. I've actually put them in order of scroll so you can scroll them, okay? You just go up and um, through these slides, because you have the slides in PowerPoint, so you can um, go up through those slides and you can follow them, okay? So you can follow these structures and you can learn them on the way, okay? So you can go through these slides or if you go to the, to the bright blood images, you can scroll up and you can scroll down and you can learn those, where those structures are. Okay, then once you've learned that and once you've understood, understood that, what I would do is then I would start to um, identify those structures without scrolling up and down. Okay, so scroll up and down, identify, okay, what the hell is that structure? I don't know. Okay, um, I'm going to take that off. I don't know what that structure is. I'm going to find out where it starts and ends. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to say, okay, that's going to start. So that obviously starts at the left ventricle. Now, it must be the pulmonary artery because it's come at the right ventricle. It's come off the right ventricle. It's the main pulmonary artery because I can see it goes into the right and the left pulmonary artery. Okay, so then you can, once you've scrolled up and down and you've learnt where the vessels are, then you can learn how to identify them on single um, images. Okay, that's the way I would study it. Everyone's got different, I can't tell you how to study it um, because I'm not you, but um, other people might like to look at textbooks and, and rely more on textbooks than actual images. Um, I wouldn't do that. I would look at the images, I would scroll through them, and then I would start to test myself on each individual image. Okay, I appreciate it is, uh, it's, it's definitely realistic because you get, you do get presented with these images, static images in clinic. So it is, it is definitely realistic. But a lot of times you will get in, you will get presented with the image sets and um, in the clinic, and that does make it easier um, when you've learned these structures off the, the static images. So yes, while it is a little bit harder um, looking at the static images, this information is very valuable. And again, you learn, um, you need to take this knowledge that you learn in third year into fourth year when you study MRI and you will get tested on these structures again in fourth year. Okay. Um, and from second year to third year to fourth year. Um, I'm sorry, that was a very long winded answer, Caitlin, but um, looking at, um, I would definitely start by knowing your circulation, looking at the images in series, which is why I've presented you with the PowerPoints and then following that series up to static images and looking at the images and identifying the structures of static images. Any other questions? Anything else? We're running out of time or over time, we've run out of time. Um, is there any other questions that anyone's not sure about um, that wants more information? If I can, can I help? <laughs> 